Well, now what are we supposed to talk about? <laughs> hey, everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is our weekly recap of WandaVision. And after weeks and weeks of us coming in and going, I think it could be this thing, I think it could be this thing, I think it could be this thing, they come in here and they make the big reveal. And it's the big reveal we've all been saying. Okay, well, yeah, obviously it's that thing. Like, 100%. Like, we all know. Like, we were calling that from literally episode one. Mm -hmm. We're like, nope, the name makes too much sense. The hairstyle matches up too much in that first episode. She seems to know way too much about what's going on. Yeah, and I feel like even if you don't read the comics, it would be, like, pretty obvious. You, would, you wouldn't know that she's Agnes Harkness, uh, Harkness which, by the way, that's going to take some getting used to, because uh, for everybody who's been watching the past couple episodes, I can only imagine how much the comments have been screaming at me. It's not Harkins, it's Harkness, you idiot. <laughs> I don't know if I'm dyslexic or not. Some people have actually asked me if I am before, because I mispronounce names and words all the time, but not like way off, always just like, Whoop, like swap and doers. And my entire life, I thought her name was Agatha Harkins, not Agatha Harkness. So that's going to take some getting <laughs> used to. By the way, for anybody who's never tuned into one of these recaps before, uh, they're spoiler recaps. So spoilers all around. <laughs> I just realized I probably should have put that out there. Um, yeah, there's far fewer, like, what could that mean? What could this mean? What could that mean? Because in this one, they come flat in here at the end and just go like, yep. This is what it is. Yeah, but it's uh, like, we now know who is behind all this. Now the question is, why? Why? Which, uh, I saw a lot of people out there saying that they think, which, by the way, uh, one of the things that I love about doing this on a week-by-week -week basis is that at the beginning of every single episode, I have an excuse to come in here and go, okay, here's all the things that people contacted me about and told me their crazy theories, and those crazy theories make way more sense than some of my crazy theories, so we're going to talk about some of them. So even if we're now getting some information, there's still some stuff that I want to discuss, because I think there's still a few things that could be, like, up in the air here. Um... But, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of people saying, like, I don't think they're the real villain of the whole thing, because we still got two more episodes. This really seems like a reveal that would happen in the next episode. Like, it feels like the real yeah, villain the would... Yeah, the second-to-last episode. Yeah, in the penultimate episode, yeah. I don't think so, because I think the next episode is going to be entirely a flashback. I think the next episode is going to be, okay, how did we get here? How did Wanda get these powers? How are we now, like, uh, how did she meet up with Agnes? How did she know where Vision was? <laughs> All that stuff, yeah, exactly. Like, how did we get from the end of Endgame when it looked like Wanda and Clint were, like, Staring off into the distance like, yeah, you know what, we need to continue living for for them and all that good stuff. And then how do we get to, you know, Wanda has created a reality where she and Vision can be happy. Uh, yeah, how do we get to those two points? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the entire next episode is going to be a flashback and it's going to end right where this episode ended. So for anybody who's like, I can't wait to see what happens next, I don't think we're going to get anything next in the next episode except for like one extra scene or something. Um, which, by the way, I had to go on Twitter and tell everybody there is a post credit scene on this episode. There has not been one on any episode yet. There was one for this one, and it makes me wonder if, like, you know, it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's always got the mid credit sequences or the post credit sequences. I wonder if them adding that in to this episode was kind of their way of saying, yeah, we're starting to break out the fake reality, get back to the real reality. I wonder if that was like their subtle way of kind of like putting that in there. Uh, Cause there are so many subtle things that they do in here to kind of like do uh, show, okay, reality breaking down, all these sorts of things. Or like reality, mo not breaking down, but moving forward. Which we should talk about this. The theme for this episode was Modern Family. I had somebody reach out to me and say, I think the next episode is going to be Modern Family. And all I could think in my head was, that would make a ton of sense for the 2010s. But the next episode is going to be the 2000s, so it wouldn't fit for that decade. Little did I know that they were going to come in here and go, oh, we're just going, we're just cramming two decades into one. We don't have time for that. We are now all right up. Because in my mind, I was like, okay, we've got three episodes left. 2000s, 2010s, then we get to the modern day, which is going to be when everything gets wrapped up. Um, so, yeah, the fact that they just came in here and went, nope, guess what, we're just going to put, put those two decades right there together. It's like, yeah, Modern Family makes a thousand percent sense. And, again, we talked about this with the music on the last episode, but we have to come in here and just 
applaud how they are nailing every single decade and every single genre and every single show that they were trying to pay tribute to because you know like with the last one it was the lighting and the camera angles that really got me and also like the small facial expressions on the actors in this one um I mean, sorry, did I say the line? I mean, the music. The music, the camera angles, and the facial expressions on the actors was really giving me in the last one. In this one, I couldn't help but notice the lighting just nails that soft lighting look that Modern Family goes for. I thought that they did an incredible job of just hitting that one for one. And I enjoyed that, you know, it's now the time period in which people are breaking the fourth wall, which you can read all kinds of stuff into that being like a statement on Wanda's uh, mental state. Um, but I did enjoy how they were able to like, kind of like play into that and how much, how self-aware they were of how those types of shows work. Cause like there's that moment in which Vision kind of just turns to the camera and gives like the gem from the office just mm. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I love when they did that. Um, also, I love that when you stop and think about yeah, Wanda constantly breaking the fourth wall, it's because she's trying to have a therapy session with herself. In the last episode, Pietro was there to kind of like give her a therapy session. In this one, he's gone, which we need to talk about Pietro. But in this one, he's gone, and in this one, no one's there but herself. And it's her basically like trying to talk to someone to try and rationalize all the things that she's doing. Uh, like I said, Pietro was trying to give her like a therapy session, but he was also kind of like half trying to like rationalize with her. Like, yeah, no, I'm totally on board with everything you're doing. But then he would give her like one little bit of detail that'd be like, yeah, but no, you need to think about this stuff and realize that you're doing some messed up things. In this one, it's clear she's realized she did some messed up things, but she needs to like talk it out mm -hmm. with herself to basically be like, no, it's actually, listen, I just had a stressful day and I'm just gonna like, just take a day for me, kind of deal with it because you know, hey, I just changed all reality again. I mean, I've, what are you gonna do about that? I mean, hey, it happens. Uh, yeah, like basically trying to downplay the terrible thing that she's doing. Um, but when it gets to Vision breaking the fourth wall and him having the interview, I was like, yeah, that's kind of a cute thing because it's like the rules of this reality they create. But then you stop and think about when they're in the car trying to get back to Wanda and then they put up like road construction or they keep running into red lights and they're like, gosh, like something is trying to keep us from getting to Wanda, you stop and you look at Vision having these uh, fourth wall breaking moments, these little like one-on-one -on -one sit down moments, and you realize, oh, the reality itself, because that's now the rules of this reality, it's forcing Vision to stop what he's doing so that he now has to stop, rather than trying to get to Wanda, he has to stop and go, well, you know, I really should have thought about Wanda a little bit more, and I can't imagine what she's been going through this entire time. And yeah, uh, the format of the fourth wall breaking interview shows plays into the fact that Wanda is trying to keep Vision from getting back to her. Uh, I thought that was great. Um, again, it's one of those things where I don't know if I'm giving the show too much credit. I don't even know if they stopped to think about that. But it makes 100% sense why Vision would suddenly stop and do an interview because Wanda's reality is trying is making him do that in order to try and prevent him from getting back to Wanda. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I went hard here at the beginning of this one. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that the format that they did in this episode was great. Um, we've already kind of mentioned the big twist of it being uh, Agatha all along, which, again, the music, the freaking music, like, that's what, <sighs> this show does such a good job of getting just close enough that you can understand what the music is ripping off mm -hmm. while being totally its own thing. And when that Agatha All Along song comes in here at the end, I was like, that is one of the greatest tributes to the Munsters theme song I have ever heard without just being the Munsters theme song. Uh, I thought that was so good. Also, I saw someone on Twitter um, bring up, how good would it be if every single one of these episodes starts with Elizabeth Olsen coming in here and going, previously on WandaVision, how great would it be if the next episode starts with Katherine Hahn coming in here and going, previously on Agatha All Along? That would be great. I doubt they'll do it, but it would be so good. Um, by the way, 
we have to, we have to talk about how good Katherine Hahn has been this entire season. Uh, man, I really hope that's the actress's name because I am terrible at remembering names. Uh, as you guys saw from me not remembering Agatha Harkin's name, despite the fact that I've been saying it on every single episode of this show. Uh, but yeah, if I am aware that pretty much every single awards group out there kind of has a thing against the MCU, which, you know, with the movies, I'm not going to come in here and say, like, oh, the movie should be winning all the Oscars. No, 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 I fully understand there are bigger and more glorious, amazing movies out there that should be getting nominated and recognized. But when it comes to television, I was always kind of trying to like, wow, Jessica Jones didn't get anything? Really? Nobody on that show got anything? Like, no? Like, maybe even Daredevil could maybe have squeezed out one or two things in here every now and again? I mean, everybody talked about how good Kingpin was in that. Nobody's going to give No? Okay. Nobody's going to give anybody anything for any of this stuff. If Katherine Hahn does not get nominated for anything in any group... For this show, I will be stunned. There is no justice in this world, or at least in the Emmys, <laughs> which there's never been any. The Emmys are the worst award show out there. <laughs> like, period. Not even up for debate, anybody. Not even up for debate. But even a broken clock is right twice a day. So if that broken clock does not land on Katherine Hahn, I will be stunned. Uh, yeah, she has been insanely good and I didn't even know this but she also played Doc Ock on in Into the Spider-Verse <laughs> I didn't know that so she is now like she has got the best track record of anybody playing multiple superhero related characters super villains maybe well like co <laughs> comic book related characters comic book related characters I should say uh which yeah that's a really good segue uh I am now wondering I am still wondering is it going to be Agatha? Which, by the way, we will end up getting... Remind me, let's get back to Monica Rambo. We're here on Agatha right now, but we do have to talk about Monica. Because um, that is totally the kind of thing that I would do where I talk so long about one thing, and I'm like, well, I think we covered everything in this episode. Anyway, bye, everybody. <laughs> um, without talking about one of the major beats of this show. Um, but yeah, I am very interested to see... Is she actually going to be the real villain, or is there another thing in here? And yes, I do understand that I am now starting to sound like every single crazed conspiracy theory person on the internet with how much I have now been bringing up Mephisto, which is really interesting because I think on the very first episode of this that we did, when everyone was saying Mephisto, I think I even came in here and said, I don't think it's gonna be Mephisto. Like, I said, if it's gotta be anybody, Probably it's gonna be Mephisto, but I don't think it's gonna like I like I'm only giving it like I think I give it like a 50 50 shot at being Mephisto and the more time goes on I'm just like I think this thing is Mephisto. I'm really starting to think it um because I saw a meme going around in which it said MCU fans watching WandaVision and it was uh and it was like, their neighbors pop up. <gasps> Mephisto. That stork pops up. <laughs> Mephisto. Uh, then uh, Pietro pops up. Mephisto. Uh, then a bug pops up in the last episode. Mephisto. Like, I get it. I get that the internet has been going nuts with how much it's pointing at the screen and being like, it's Mephisto. It's got to be Mephisto. It's got to be 100% Mephisto. But the more time goes on, the more I'm starting to actually buy into that. The more I'm starting to go like, there are a lot of freaking hints on this. And we do have to point out that right before uh, Wanda discovered Agatha's secret lair, which, oh man, <laughs> was that ever creepy. That was, I have seen horror movies that do not have shots that good in it. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, this thing, it's low with comedy. It's, you know, not even trying that hard, like, it's trying very hard to be uh, dark and serious, obviously, but like the tone that it's constantly trying to embrace is not dark and serious, but that's one of the things that makes it dark and serious. It's a very interesting show and in how it's able to achieve all this. Um, but when this show wants to get dark and scary, man, they nail it. Um, but uh, right before she discovers the secret layer, we do see a fly and we just zoom in and focus on that. Flies have always been like a classic sign of the devil. So I thought it was a cicada, but I thought it was too. But I saw the internet going, no, it's like a very large type of fly. But I'm okay, like, all right, it did look like a cicada to me. Um, 
But yeah, I'm wondering if it's a cicada, then why? But yeah, like I said, I thought it was a cicada too, but the internet was like, no, that's a very, that's a like, that's a giant. That's this kind of fly or yeah, something like that. That's what I saw. I was going, saw people going like, no, 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 this actually resembles this brand of fly. I was like, all right. All right. I, I guess those are the easy to train flies, and that's what the ones <laughs> that they had to use. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's an insect. Insects in general, winged insects in general, have always got to be like a symbol of evil, the plague, the devil. So it's like, all right, I guess that could maybe be Mephisto there. But there's a lot of stuff from the previous couple episodes that after we recorded the last episode, I started watching other people's theories. And there's a lot of things that we kind of missed. Or maybe not even missed, but like didn't inter like other people have been interpreting it differently. Um, and I mean, I'll just cover a few of them real quick in here. Uh, one is a lot of people were saying that Pietro is actually the devil because we were talking about how he's coming in here and he's essentially, I kept saying, and I still kind of stand by this, is that he was meant to kind of be like Wanda's own internal mind trying to reach out to her and tell her, no, this is wrong, because he was coming in there going, no, I think all the stuff that you're doing is great, but here's a little tiny thing that you should probably think about. Uh, like, just sliding that across the table with him. But I saw a lot of people going, I was like, no, he's kind of like, yeah, I mean, he's kind of torturing her a little bit by reminding her of the terrible thing that she's done, a very devil-style thing. But at the same time, he's he is telling her, no, I think this is great. Keep doing what you're doing. Which, yeah, that's also a temptation thing, which is kind of what the devil is known for. Um, so, yeah, like this guy suddenly pops up out of nowhere at the exact moment she's starting to doubt and everything going to be about to fall apart. And then he comes in and is like, no, keep doing what you're doing. So I was like, okay, that seems kind of interesting timing on that. But there's even like a moment where they're out trick-or-treating and he refers to uh, her kids as devil spawns. So it's like... That is that is interesting choice of words. In the opening credit sequence where they were ripping off Malcolm in the Middle, he's making the rock and roll devil horns. So it's like, okay. Again, like, those two things separate, I wouldn't really look at, but the fact that he did both of them is like, okay, that is maybe something to think about. And I had that in my mind as we were watching this episode, and this episode, they're like, well, what was that thing that Uncle Pietro said about? No, that thing is not your uncle. The fact that, like, she flat out came in here was like, that is not your, like, ooh. Oh, that's interesting, and it makes me kind of think that she does know what it is, and she's just like, you get out. You stay far away. We do not want you anywhere near this. You're going to screw everything up. Uh, yeah, it makes me kind of wonder. Could it be that she knows it, it, if it is the devil, that she knows it's the devil because maybe she made a deal with the devil? And that brings me back to another thing that people were bringing up was the Yo Magic commercial, mm -hmm. the uh, yogurt commercial from the last one, where it's this kid starving on an island, and it's like, I would eat anything, and then this shark, which is a big predator-type animal, pops up and... Yeah, I was focusing on the magic part of the last episode. I was focusing on, like, they're just flat out telling us it's magic. They're flat out saying it's magic that she's using now. I did not pay attention to the phrasing in which the shark goes, when I'm hungry, I snack on yo magic. It literally says, I, I eat your magic. Mm. That's, oh! And that would explain why the kid ends up starving to death at the end of the commercial. But not only does the kid end up starving to death, the kid's wearing a red shirt, which red is her color scheme. And then the kid goes, can I have some? Sure you can. They made a deal. They made, like, it's literally like, they asked for a thing, I give you a thing. Like, there's an exchange there. And now you must suffer the consequences. Yeah, it's a deal with the devil. In other words, I'm like, oh God, yeah, now I can't help but look at that and be like, oh crap. Uh, I think it is the devil now. I think you guys, like, man, again, I remember I was kind of naysaying you guys out there thinking it was Mephisto, but holy crap, this really looks like it's Mephisto now. Uh, so there's, you, th uh, you think Agatha is working for Mephisto? Maybe, because uh, here's the thing that I want to get back. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that back around, because uh, that was all the theories on Mephisto that we had going. Um, I will say I do still think there's a pretty good shot that Pietro is, like, Wanda's own mind trying to help her in a way because at the end of this episode when Monica is about to go into the big spooky 
cross-dimensional basement, uh, Pietro then pops up, and it looks almost like Pietro is there to stop her, which, if that's the case, then yeah, Mephisto, or some kind of a creation of Agatha's. Um, but we don't see what he does there at the end. He could be about to help her. And if he's about to help her, that would be one is subconscious, like, you know, Pietro knows that she's in trouble. This person can help. I'm going to go there and team up with her and try and save her. Uh, yeah, it could still, like, I'm still, like, 50-50 on, okay. Pietro's definitely one of those two. Definitely either the devil or definitely either, like, one is subconscious trying to help her. Um, which... Again, we really need an explanation of why he looks different. <laughs> we need some kind of an explanation on why he looks different. Uh, if he is a creation of Agatha's, which is what it's implied at the end of this episode, it could just be that Agatha didn't really know what he looked like. Yeah. And, yeah, and the fact that they chose the Fox guy, like I said, the only thing that could really disappoint me about this show right now, like, Mephisto, you don't need to do that at all. You don't need to do any of these weird theories that I've had. This show's been great so far. I'm just, like, thinking, like, the Fox movies are canon in the MCU, so it's like, oh! Oh, I see what you're saying! It's, so she, like, sees the movies, like, oh, is that what he looks like? Okay, then. Oh, my God, that would actually be a great <laughs> joke, where it's not the Fox things, but the joke is that, like, Tony Stark owns a movie studio and he's been selling the rights for the Avengers movies off to them. <laughs> so they made a movie about Age of Ultron in their universe. And that's the guy that played Pietro in the movies inside. And everybody was saying, oh, that's a crazy thing. In the Marvel comics, Marvel Comics does exist, and they do make comics about the superheroes within their universe. That would be a great, a great reference to this very weird corner of the Marvel Comics. That's like, Marvel Comics exist within Marvel Comics, the MCU exists within the MCU. That would be a crazy thing for them to do, and I would love it. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, the only thing that could really bug me about this show is if literally the excuse for why they got the Fox guy in here to be Pietro has nothing to do with like the multiverse, has nothing to do with any of that stuff. If it just is like, oh yeah, I just didn't know what he looked like, so I just put him in there. Okay, but like I wouldn't even be that pissed because it would be kind of like a decent, uh, like it would kind of be a decent excuse if it was all Agatha, but if it turns out it's Wanda or it is Mephisto, them like okay no it it has to have something like it, it's too weird it's too weird um like i always have like contract issues like the original actor like just like was not well then why did you get the fox guy <laughs> like that's my thing it's like no no i don't have a problem that you had to replace the dude no i understand that that could have been like you said contract stuff or whatnot but no you specifically got the fox guy it's like Okay, if there is, like, if it's just Agatha and this was just, like, an Easter egg because Agatha didn't know what he looked like, fine. But if it's Wanda or if it's Mephisto and there is not some kind of an explanation, that will be the one thing that ticks me off. But as I said in the last episode, there might not be an explanation now, but she, but we do know that Wanda is going to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, a movie that has to do with the multiverse. There could be an explanation there. However... We do need to talk, and I swear we will get back to Agatha in a second. Um, we do need to talk about the commercial for this episode. The commercial for this one, which by the way, I love that like the commercials tend to update themselves too with every single decade, and now they're getting into the 2000s. They're talking about how there were pharmaceutical commercials all over the place in the 2000s, and there still are to this day. Um, yeah, that's something that's just never going away, <laughs> uh, even though it's a very weird thing. Um, Sorry, I uh, I went too fast. And I had to stop and like, <laughs> I had to stop and reboot myself. I blue screen there for a second, um, but yeah, I do kind of love that like Wanda, who really does have a lot of trauma. She's got a lot of psychological issues. I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna come in here and try and diagnose this fictional character, but she definitely has a lot of things. She that, went through a lot of shit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I saw a post on, uh, I'm sorry to keep referencing Twitter, but <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff that comes from Twitter when it comes to WandaVision. I saw a post, and it was a shot from the end of Endgame, where it was uh, Falcon, Wear Soldier, and Wanda all staying next to each other, and said, the, we really need therapy, but they gave us a show instead group. <laughs> yeah, she really needs therapy. She really needs therapist, uh, therapist, a psychiatrist, 
psychiatrist, a psychologist. Uh, she needs just really to get some professional help. That's what she needs. She does not, like, that's one of the things I'm loving about Monica in here. One of the things I love about Monica is that she's looking over at Juan and goes, no, she is suffering from trauma. I have experienced similar trauma myself, and I can tell you, going in there with the big knockdown, drag out superhero fight is not the thing that's going to resolve this. It's just going to make it worse. She needs someone who understands. And this episode, when they finally confront, I love that she doesn't come in there and is like, I'm going to take you with me by force. I'm going to use these new powers I've got to stop mm -hmm. you. She just kind of stands there like, no, I'm going to talk to you because like, you need someone to talk like, to you. I don't even know if she like, realizes that she has she powers. Doesn't, yeah, yeah, she doesn't even realize that. She's got to realize something is up. She yeah. has to realize something now, is up. I, like, they definitely mentioned like your DNA is all screwed up, but she doesn't understand like how she doesn't know up. what she can yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. There's obviously that. Um, yeah, which man, I am hoping they do a lot more stuff with her in the MCU. I'm hoping that she's in Avengers Four. I'm hoping that she's in like just a ton of stuff moving forward. Because um, yeah, she has been fantastic. Again, we will get back to her. Um, but yeah, uh, so I did kind of appreciate that the commercial for this episode was an antidepressant because it was kind of like Wanda's inner self kind of coming out and be like, no, 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 this is what I really need. This is the stuff I actually need. But the name of the drug was Nexus. Mm -hmm. And man, I'm a big Marvel fan. Even I had to stop for a second to Google this one. And as soon as I Googled it, I was like, oh yeah, okay. It's the thing that Man-Thing guards down the swamp. Uh, in Marvel Comics, the Nexus is the gateway to all alternate realities. So, yeah, if you want to know, like, a, if you want to know how this is going to lead into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, they've literally set up alternate realities here in this one, which, again, that's the thing that brings me back into Pietro. If there is not some kind of an explanation about his connection to the Fox things, after they specifically came in here and the commercial was, if you need help, look to the gateway to all alternate realities. Alternate reality. Like, they specifically came in here and had the commercial be about alternate realities. The Pietro is now being played by a guy from an alternate reality. It's... It fits way too yeah. well. Uh, okay, I think I've stuck with that for enough. Uh, we were talking about Agatha. Um, okay, so this thing that I was going to say about Agatha, I am curious to see whether or not she is really the big villain or if there's something else going on here. I feel like there has to be something else because her being the big villain would have been like a really big, obvious reveal, especially like the way she's It's been. a little too uh, like Yeah. Even for me, the guy who from day one has been going, it's Agatha Harkness, it's Agatha Harkness. Actually, that was not me from day one. From day one, it was Agatha Harkins, Agatha Harkins. <laughs> uh, again, that's going to take some getting used to. Um, Just think darkness, but we replace the D with an H. Oh, Wow, comics. Wow. <laughs> wow, comic book names. Wow. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, it does, I feel like, even it, like, I saw some people online going, like, I don't follow the comics at all, but even I was calling Agatha has got something to do with this. Like, she's breaking the fourth wall. She's doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, the dog. If you hear stuff dropping, the dog wants us to play. Yeah. So come on, buddy. Come on, yes. get up here. Get up here. Yes. Get up here. Yeah. And I killed Sparky too. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh she gives is so good. Which that's the only thing that I called that I'm actually kind of proud of because with like Agatha, I'm like every like everybody called that. With her killing the dog, I'm actually kind of proud. I was like, no, no, no. I knew that shit. I knew, I call that like Babe Ruth pointing out home run. Um. Yeah, uh... And then she might have done something with the kids, too. <sighs> okay. The kids aren't real. <laughs> I feel like I have to point that out. The kids are not real yet, if you know the comics. Um, <laughs> so I feel like if they are going to do something dark to the kids, that's their way of getting around it. Because it's Disney+, Plus, and we know that Disney+, Plus can't get that dark until, like, next year when they add, like, Disney+, plus plus or whatever it is where they're t going like oh yeah don't we own like predator and alien and all that stuff now yeah, like we can't really put that on disney plus so they have so they're going to create like a side part like here's the like for the 18 and up disney yeah. plus stuff uh which thank god because that's one problem i've always had with disney plus that's like do you know like how many like p 
potential like Marvel and Star Wars properties like you can't really touch now because they won't fit on here. And it's like, oh, now you got that thing. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do with these characters then. But yeah, we know that Disney can't get too dark on Disney+. Plus. So in my mind, I'm like, they can't just get rid of the kids. That'd be really like, they can't say that Agatha killed the kids. That would be way too dark, but then I have to remind myself, yeah, the kids technically aren't real, so they could. They could totally get around that. Uh, and I'm very intrigued to see what they're gonna do, because in the comics, in the comics, this is this really stupid thing, which I know, again, like, Young Avengers fans, I am not insulting you in any way. The Young Avengers are great. Billy and Tommy, okay, Billy is great. Tommy kind of sucks. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Wiccan is one of the best new characters in the past two decades to be introduced into Marvel. His brother, Speed, has a terrible name, terrible costume, and he's just, <laughs> he's just tiny Quicksilver, and I will die on that hill no matter what. Um, but... Yes, in the comics, even you Young Avengers fans, you gotta admit, it's really stupid how they put them in the comics. Because what they did is that Wanda, she had the kids, but then it was revealed that the kids were being created by like some demon thing that reabsorbed them and stuff. And it was like, eh, it's this whole. It was a pretty stupid storyline. But they stayed gone for like 20, 30 years. Then all of a sudden, this group of young heroes pop up, and there's two brothers. One with white hair, who's a speedster, and one who can control magic, and they're two boys, and they're twins, and they were in their teenage years then, and a lot of people were looking at them and was like, that's kind of like Wanda, like, that's like Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and Wanda did have two magically created twins, and oh, could this be a, could this be a reference to them? And their explanation is that after the kids were destroyed, the souls that Wanda created still lived in within her, but there were also two twins in reality who were being raised as normal kids, and then one day Wanda just passed their souls into these kids, so Wanda's kids' souls merged with these total strangers' kids' souls. Like, That's stupid. That's really <laughs> stupid. No, don't do that. Here's what you do. You just say that Wanda's kids got transported into our reality, and like Wanda like, alt used her reality-altering powers, so they think that they like grew up in this regular family, but actually they've just been Wanda's kids the whole time. That's the far, far simpler explanation of all that stuff. Like, no weird, like, she just picked some family at random and soul merger thing going on. Like, no, Wanda's kids in our reality. That's it. Done. Dust your hands off. Done. Um, so, anyway, uh, yeah. So, they are definitely setting up the Young Avengers uh, in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, Kate Bishop is going to be in the Hawkeye show. Uh, Ant-Man's daughter, because of the five-year time skip, like, she's now a teenager. Uh, and now you got Billy and you got Tommy being set up. Uh, I'm just saying, when it comes to how to introduce them into regular reality, don't do the soul merger thing. It's just it's too <laughs> stupid. It's too crazy. Um, anywho. Hi, tiny dog. <laughs> uh, so, you're distracting me, tiny dog. But you're <laughs> too cute. I can't stop. Um, okay. We keep jumping away from, well, we. Uh, I <laughs> keep jumping away from Agatha because I have an intention span of a gnat, um, and there's too many things to talk about. Even on the episode where there aren't a bunch of mysteries, I'm still jumping all over the place. Um, but yeah, I am wondering about Agatha because in the comics, um, she has, she's not really a hero, but she isn't evil. But there have been like one or two storylines where she did some bad stuff. There have definitely been one or two storylines where she did some bad things. Like I think I have not read every Agatha Harkness storyline out there. Um, and even then, it's been a long time since I read some of those Avengers stories involving her and Scarlet Witch. Uh, like I think I read those when I was a teenager, so I'm drawing on like old data banks here. Um, but I believe that, like, one time when she kind of turned evil, it had to do with, like, her son was dead, and she was trying to take someone else's magic to try and resurrect him, which we've been saying from day one. There is definitely a theme of the dead being raised. Uh, and when Sparky was killed, I said that I thought that Agatha killed the dog because Agatha is trying to like show Wanda, no, 
You now have to teach your children that it is wrong to use magic to get whatever they want. You are now going to be forced to teach your kids that the thing that you did is a bad thing, so maybe you can start to understand you should not be doing this. But now that I'm thinking, like, oh, yeah, like, if her son is dead and she's trying to, like, like bring maybe him back. She's, yeah, trying maybe to she wasn't trying to teach Wanda this is bad. Maybe she was trying to tempt Wanda to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, Agatha could totally be the bad person here. Also, when they go into the big, dark, spooky basement, uh, there's a book down there. That book is um, known as The Dark Home. Which is essentially the big evil magic book in Marvel. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you don't know anything about the comics, you can just look at that book and be like, that's an evil magic book. The Necronomicon book right of Marvel. It's totally that. <laughs> that's like almost one in one. <laughs> All it's missing is the big flesh face on there. Um, and a lot of racism inside. Uh, <laughs> there, I covered both Necronomicons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for that one person out there going, you know Necronomicon is not from <laughs> the Evil Dead originally. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to take that thing that you love now and show you what's wrong with it. Um, hi, dog. You're just distracting with how cute you are. Mm -hmm. But the audience loves it, so. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, so it could be the Dark Home. Uh, because, again, I'm like, Agatha is not really an evil character in the comic. She's just kind of like a, she's very chaotic neutral. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Maybe even, like, not chaotic, maybe more of just pure neutral. Because <laughs> uh, chaotic neutral implies that, like, she will be evil if she needs to be. She will tend to stick to the path of righteousness. She just won't tend to stop and step in and help anyone. Uh, she does. She's, she's in it for herself, basically. No, she's more just like, just leave me alone. But if you need some magical help, I guess I'm here. Okay. She's like that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm looking at that book, and I'm like, okay, I could see maybe Agatha. She was desperate for like something to be able to like resurrect her son. So if that is the storyline that they're going with, so maybe she's desperate for something to resurrect her son. She goes to this evil book. The evil book ends up corrupting her. Um, or she goes to, or Wanda comes to her, and she's like helping out Wanda. And she's like, well, there is this book that might be able to help, but it could be kind of dangerous. And then the two of them mess with it, and that's how they end up getting in this situation. I do think there's a chance that maybe Agatha isn't entirely behind it. We've all been throwing around Mephisto, but it could just be the Dark Home itself. Um, and the Dark Home could be like the portal to these alternate realities, aka the Nexus. Which one interesting thought that I did have is that in the comics, uh, the Nexus, it's this like location in a swamp and Man-Thing ends up guarding it. Uh, and they kept, man, a lot of people are really upset that in this episode we finally saw the scientist that, uh, um, well, maybe we didn't actually see it, but we saw some sword agents that Monica knew. Mm -hmm. But Monica definitely referenced, I know a scientist, and they stopped in there like, that's going to be a big thing. And everybody has been going, it's either going to be Reed Richards or it's going to be Blue Marvel. It's going to be one of those two characters. And I don't know if like we actually did officially get introduced to them in this last episode. I don't know if they're still off screen, but they are off screen. Man Thing was originally a scientist who ended up getting turned into a big swamp creature. I was I was coming up with the idea like maybe like Westview was built on top of a swamp. Oh my god. On top goodness. of Man Thing swamp. Well, I mean, granted that's well. Oh shoot, I think his swamp is down in New Orleans, but it's slowly hitting me how little swamp thing I know. Yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, they could easily change the location for the. Oh, totally, you're universe, absolutely right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Cinematic like, universe. I was, yeah, I was about to say, it's like, wait, it doesn't freaking matter. But I like that theory. I like that theory a lot. Like, why? Because yeah, that's been a big question. Why on earth would you come to like just some tiny town in New Jersey, unless there was specifically a thing there? Like, <laughs> maybe everything that we're seeing of Westview, it's all fake. It's all this reality that she's created, except for that basement. That basement is the only real thing, and deep down in there, because you see like vines and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, out. definitely. Man, I think you got a good theory there. Man, I talk for like ninety percent of these episodes because I just can't contain myself, and then you're just a sniper. You just <laughs> you just sit there. Like, I'm going to wait and take my shot. That's going to be the best thing anyone says in this entire episode. <laughs> yeah, man, I like that theory. I like that a lot. Um, I swear to God, if we get introduced to man thing at the end of this, well, you know, everybody's like, oh, man, the X-Men, Mr. Fantastic. Ooh, man, it's gonna, they're going to introduce something in here. 
I'll be real with you. If it turns out the big introduction we get is man thing, I will lose my mind. <laughs> and I say that as a good thing. <laughs> I will be a thousand percent like. I would love it. I would love it if it turned out it was man thing was the big thing this was all leading up to. That would be great. Um, uh, yeah, I think, man, I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I'm really intrigued to see if that's what they end up doing. Even if it's just like a small thing. Even if it's just a very tiny, like, the ne like at the very end of this, there's some big thing where, like, the Nexus is, like, collapsing in on itself, and they have to get everybody out of Westview, and then, like, there in the center of it, you see, like, the big, tangled, like, vine creature that has swamp, not swamp thing, sorry. <laughs> Different thing. vine creature. <laughs> Which, I don't know if you actually know that. I don't know how many people at home know that, but for anybody who's out there is like, Wait, so what's the difference between man thing and swamp thing? Uh, almost nothing. Because <laughs> literally how the story goes is that a writer for DC and a writer for Marvel were at a bar one night and they were discussing a character and they literally came up with a deal where they're like, let's both take this same exact pitch back to our companies at the same time and see like who gets received, but like see which one of us gets to do it. And they both got to do it. <laughs> so yeah, there's literally a reason why the two of them are the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm not even joking on that. That's exactly what happened. Swamp Man thing. <laughs> Swamp Man is the real, like that's the obvious one. That's like, uh, but yeah, I, lo I love that story. I just always enjoy that. But yeah, I would love it if like the, like some big freaky like tangled vine creature, like even for like a second, like start forming out of the vines or something, I would lose my mind if that happened. Um, I would live stream the shit out of this episode <laughs> just so you can all get that reaction that <laughs> comic book fans live react to WandaVision. Um, Except it'd be three in the morning and we don't want to wake our neighbors. <laughs> I might still risk it. Uh, <laughs> I might risk it. Um, but yeah, okay, so we've covered Agatha. Uh, I don't know if she's really the one behind it all or if they've got one final twist coming, but her magic is definitely playing into this in some way. She's definitely the one like doing some magical stuff in here. Um, uh, let's see, we've tied into the Nexus, we've talked about that. Uh, I don't know if the kids are still alive, which I, in a weird way, I'd respect this show if they killed off the kids, because they'd be like, holy crap, you guys want to go dark and you went dark. But they're not technically real, so it's okay. Uh, when I say it's okay, I mean in terms of Disney Plus allowing that to happen. <laughs> not in terms of like, yeah, I don't care about them kids, they ain't real. No, 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 they made me care about these kids. I am actually like, I look at these kids like, they've actually got some personality and they're not just creation, like, they're not just like, puppets that Wanda is controlling. They are acting separate of Wanda. I mean, in this episode, when they're like, I think our mom is, I think something's definitely wrong with her. That's not like Wanda, like, just going, these are my ideal children. They're going to tell me everything I want to hear. It's like, no, she created actual creatures. She created actual things with their own personality and minds. But I could understand someone at Disney Plus going like, oh, they would never allow us to kill kids in one of our shows. Oh, their creation's magic? Oh, okay, well, that gets passed. <laughs> That's fine, yes. Um, uh, the only thing we haven't really talked about was Monica, which we'll get to in just a second, but there's one last crazy theory that I saw someone throwing out that I definitely want to talk about because I think it's got some, I think it's got some legs on it. Uh, in episode two, we met that lady, Phoebe Jones, mm -hmm. and they were like, she runs this entire neighborhood, and we haven't really seen squat of her since yeah. then. Yeah. Which has been a huge disappointment yeah. to me. Um, so you think she might be the head honcho behind all this? Or? No, but I think she might be getting set up for something later on. Mm. Because a lot of people will be like, this is going to tie into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. A lot of people looked at that actress, and they were like, oh, she runs everything in this town. A lot of people are like, could be Clea? Because in the comics, there is this uh, uh, sorceress, Clea, who is like almost as powerful as Doctor Strange, and she has been a love interest for Doctor Strange for a long time. So I've seen a lot of people being like, I think that might be Clea, and they're saying her up for the next Doctor Strange movie. And I'm like, okay, I can totally see that. And I saw someone online point this out, that in front of Wanda's house, she has red flowers. Her magic is red. In front of Agatha's house, she has purple flowers. At the end of this episode, we see her use some magic. It's purple. Mm -hmm. Jones has yellow flowers in front of her house. So, and they stopped to show that because in this episode, when everything is going nuts, we see her, we see Phoebe Jones over at her house and she is specifically trimming her flowers and she is right next to them and they are big, bright yellow flowers. And it's like, 
there's definitely a color pattern thing going on with the flowers, and you made sure to stop and show us her next to her flowers. Yeah, and uh, isn't Vision's power stone yellow? Oh yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't think that's. I think that's just a coincidence. Okay. I was like, that is something that is making me but think there. <laughs> something to think about. It is something to think about. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think that people are right when they say that's Clea. I definitely think that's what it is. I definitely think she's got some kind of magical powers. However, this is a theory I saw someone throw out, and I think this is like a one in ten chance. It's got just enough stuff in there to make me think, okay, maybe, maybe you're right, could be. Um, but the theory is that in Marvel, there is an alternate reality group of superheroes called the Squadron Supreme, which is basically meant to be the Justice League. It's meant to be like, their big guy is Hyperion, he's Superman. Their big like detective guy is Nighthawk, he's Batman. Uh, Nighthawk or Nightwing? Man, I'm blanking out right now. No, wait, Nightwing is Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man, I'm getting really burnt out. Um, <laughs> Nighthawk, he's supposed to be Batman. Uh, there's Power Princess, she's supposed to be Wonder Woman, blah, blah, blah. It goes like down the entire line of all the Justice League characters. Um, and like I said, they come from an alternate reality. There is a character on that team who is meant to be their version of Zaytana. Her name is Arcana, and her last name is Jones. This character's last name is Jones. Arcana uses yellow magic. We see her trimming yellow flowers, and they come from an alternate reality. The Nexus alternate reality. There's enough <laughs> stuff there that I'm like, oh my god, this could actually be a thing. You could actually be setting up like the Squadron Supreme, which meant you want to talk about what Marvel show should be on that new Disney only for adults channel, the Squadron Supreme is absolutely it. Because I would be very interested to see what the Squadron Supreme would, how they would do the Squadron Supreme in the MCU because like I said, the Squadron Supreme is always meant to be like uh, commentary on not just the Justice League, but superheroes in general. And considering that the Justice League over in the DC Cinematic Universe, it's the Zack Snyder Dark Edgelord shit, uh, yeah, you could parody the hell out of that. But you would have, like, if you're going to parody something that is trying way too hard to be over the top and dark, to the point where you're coming out and being like, we're going to actually brag about the fact that Superman says fuck in our movie. I'm like, yeah, it'd have to be on, like, the more like, adult-oriented, mm -hmm. like, Disney uh, side. Like, it couldn't be on the regular one. You would have to go all in on that. Like, I'm thinking to myself about, like, yeah, if you did a Squad and Supreme show, there would have to be a moment where someone beats someone to death. Like, there would have to be. There would have to be a moment where someone, like, dies from their own powers in a horrible, fiery mess. Like, there would have to be. Those are, like, big things that, like, when you think about, like, how dark you would get with a Squad and Supreme show, that's how dark you get. Like, next to Watchmen, it is, like, the second most second darkest commentary on superheroes. Uh, so you would have to get la that way, and if they are going to make this new, like, darker Disney channel, yeah, okay, you could definitely, like, lead it off with the Squadron Supreme show. Uh, I'd be very interested in seeing that. Um, so, yeah, I had to throw that out there, because I definitely, I think that it's, like, 90% chance it's Clea. But I, I wouldn't be lying. There's a 10% chance it's Squadron Supreme. I would not be shocked. Uh, but okay. Last thing to talk about. Oh, man. <laughs> I went into this episode thinking it was going to be a short one because it was like, yeah, they didn't really give us a lot of things to really discuss all that much because they just kind of came in here and revealed what was going on. Little did I know. Never underestimate my ability to just talk nonstop. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, we finally got to see Monica Rambo become Spectrum, become her superhero self. God, she's cool. What was oh. that, buddy? Oh, did you hear something? What was that, buddy? Oh. Get up here. Oh. Did you hear a funny noise? Get up here. <laughs> it's okay, Peach. I want to talk about this. I appreciate superheroes that have costumes that are the black and white, like, <laughs> symmetry in there. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. By the way, I love that the outfit that they gave her they did such a good interpretation of her superhero comics costume into what would be like a sword, like 
undershirt that you would wear when you're about to go like suit up to go into outer space. Like, I don't know all the terms for like space suits, but like <laughs> the like undersuit that you wear underneath that. Uh, yeah, I thought that that was so good how they just like worked that in there and they made it look very natural. And apparently, Disney's website that night started selling that shirt. <laughs> Uh, which smart, smart job. Uh, yeah, you absolutely should be selling that shirt. Um, but yeah, I pretty much just saved her for the end because I didn't really have a lot to say other than, man, she's a good character. <laughs> and that actress is so damn good. That moment where she was like pushing herself to get through the border. Mm -hmm. And again, she's doing it because she just wants to help someone. Yeah, and like you see like parts of her splitting off into like different like dimensions. But yeah, you can see like she is about to like just split apart into nothingness. Like she's about to be Thanos snapped away uh, again. Um, but yeah, she is about to just like dissolve into this magic into all these different versions and like l or... Worst case scenario, dissolve away into nothing. Best case scenario, she makes it through, but she loses all of her memories again because she gets interpreted into this sitcom world that Wanda has set up. Um, and you see her just fighting through all that, and she has to like mentally pull her own body back together, which for anybody who knows her superpowers in the comics, it's that she's not really a person anymore. She's now just living energy. Uh, her entire body got turned into living energy, and it can now become any type of energy, which when she gets through and her eyes are glowing and she looks around and she can basically like see every form of energy out there. Like she can see like... Like electricity going through the... Oh, electricity. Te telephone wires. Yeah. And electricity, uh, 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 x-rays, gamma rays, like every type of possible energy in the air that you can imagine. She can see it. Um, yeah. Uh, she, so I love the idea that, yeah, she now has these powers because... The magic did rip her apart. She no longer has a physical body. She just got ripped into nothingness, and she, through sheer willpower, had to pull herself back together. Uh, I thought that was great. Yeah, and it makes you look at her and go, like, that is a person who is very dedicated, and she's got a ton of willpower, and she is definitely going to go in there and try and help whoever she can. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Uh, it just makes you look at her and go, like, God, she's cool, and I just want her. <laughs> she needs to be in the next Avengers film. She absolutely needs to be in the next Avengers film. Uh, yeah, I really want to see what happens with her. Uh, hell, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, I've seen such positive reception in that character. I would not be shocked if, like, she ended up getting her own Disney Plus show. It might not happen for a while because Disney has the next five years planned out, but, <laughs> I mean, heck, if this thing ends up working out, I could totally see them just going, you know what, let's just create, like, let's, let's just double up all those things that we have. Because uh, they're Disney. They could totally just double up all these things they have. Like, they just keep making stuff forever. They've got the money to do it. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about Mog because she's just really cool in this episode. And I'm just very happy that now Spectrum is here in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I looked at her and went, yeah, she's real, like... <laughs> They nailed it. They, like, that is a total badass in there. And a total badass with a heart. And man, I'm just, I like her. I just like her a lot. I just think she's neat. <laughs> uh, okay, anything else that you want to say? Because I, I know I've been hogging this one. I hog all these episodes. Because <laughs> I'm the crazed conspiracy nut over here. And I'm the one that knows the comics. So it just kind of pours out of me. But like I said, you always do have some good stuff to add in here. Uh, um, I don't know if I have any more good things to add right I really, now. <laughs> I really like your idea that like Westview was built on top of the Man Thing Swamp. I love that theory, and I haven't seen anybody throw it out. I think that theory's awesome. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe not even on top of a swamp, but I mean, like on top of or something? on top of like an ancient like witch burial ground. On top of like it's built on top of the Nexus. Mm -hmm. It's all like I think you nailed it. It's a hundred percent built on top of the spot in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where all realities connect. I think you nailed it on that one. Um, man, we did not talk at all about uh, Grim Reaper on this episode because. No. Uh, I don't know the guy's name in the show, but I'm now very convinced he might end up being the Grim Reaper. Uh, oh, we did find out that it is confirmed he was trying to rebuild Vision to turn him into a weapon. So now we know why Wanda burst in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, that's yeah. absolutely understandable. I called that, but... You did. <laughs> you, de like I said, 
Like I said, I'm spouting out that like, I am a shotgun, you are a sniper. I'm just rolling myself up with rock salt and then just blasting into every direction and maybe I'll hit something. You just take your time and line up your shot. Just right. Yeah, you called that one. You did that, you absolutely called that one. Uh, I really, I cannot believe I went into this discussion. Like, I'm gonna talk about Mephisto, I'm gonna talk about this thing, and I'm so excited to see if any of them happen. And at the end of this episode, you've now got me going, I really want Man Thing to pop up. <laughs> like, forget Mephisto, throw all that stuff out. I don't even care about any of that stuff. They ain't gonna have the devil in this. It's a Disney Plus show, they're not gonna do that thing. But like I said, even just like a brief moment of a weird, creepy vine monster popping up, like, oh man. <laughs> Lion up, I'm ready to eat. Mm -mm. <laughs> Bring on the vine monster. Bring on the salad. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best line we're gonna go on. <laughs> okay, all right. Whew. I can't believe we talked again for this long about this. <laughs> Uh, I can't, I have no idea how long we're going to talk about the final episode. But we've only got two more episodes, then we'll have a week off, then we'll come back for Winter Soldier and Falcon, which I doubt I'll have that many crazy theories about that one. But you never know. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to be doing this on a weekly basis, but I mean, like I said, we're not going to have movies again until at least the end of the year, so let's just turn the movie review show into the weekly MCU television show discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... And come back, because we're going to keep doing this. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ah, Peach knows the word bye. Now she wants to go. Mm -hmm.